if it was me, I'd go to Kurashiki. Kurashiki right. is the, the Venice of Japan. Okay. Wow. Hello and welcome to the Abroad in Japan podcast. Probably the best way of learning about life in Japan without actually being in Japan. I'm your host, Chris Broad. We're joined, as always, by England's top Japan enthusiast, Mr. Pete Donaldson himself. Pete, how the devil are you doing? What's going on? Hola, Christopher. Welcome back. Mm. I am enjoying doing shows with you. IRL. Touching your face, touching your legs, touching all of your body. It's awful. It's awful. Stop touching it. It really is awful. Don't How are you me. finding um, life back in London? Um, you are here recording an audiobook. You are here um, taking care of your affairs. That's good. I uh, I, I rushed over here in a taxi because I was late, and right. I got the, the taxi stopped, and I just stood by the door waiting for it to open. <laughs> right. And the guy was like, who up, mate? Why are you getting in? And I was ah, like, oh, shit. Ah, shit, in Japan, son. the taxi doors open themselves, and nice. the person literally pulls a cable, and the door opens. <laughs> I like that. I don't. Is like... it a cable? Well, it's 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 not like this like swanky. No, I know it's often. not. I know, yeah, it it seems old... it always seems quite uh, Retro. slow and quite, it doesn't seem like a, somebody who's engineered that. Yeah, so I wonder whether there was a what was a cable. In or not. most of the older taxes, it's like a, a thing they pull. Really? Uh, and then oh, the new that ones makes sense. Yeah. It's lovely. It's lovely stuff. And yeah, it's great, but it doesn't happen in the UK. Right. And then yeah. also in the UK, you have to ta- you tip the taxi driver often. Which is okay. a bit awkward. Oh, you clearly don't, because Pete just went, oh, uh, oh, you tripped me for taxi drivers. In what, here? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You I mean, don't you in the do. Japan. No, you don't. No, you, you don't tip anyone in don't. Japan. It's, it's brilliant. It's great. <laughs> it's brilliant. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the guy called uh, Patrick uh, get, got in my Instas mm. uh, and pointed out, uh, oh, just a wonderful, um, a, a wonderful uh, website that just does, um, you know, imported um, uh, um, uh, Japanese cars and stuff. And there was a lovely um, Toyota um, driving school car, yeah. so used by driving school people to, oh, wow. to, to do stuff, I suppose. I don't know, yeah, it's very, very weird. Show me the car. I'm going to find the car. It's, it's a Toyota. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to say it's a Crown, and I think it might be a driving school. There you go, look. A Toyota Crown Comfort, and it's... And it's still got the driving, oh the Japanese Lord. driving school stuff on the side. And of you it. can buy that. And you can buy that in How the. Much? It's in this country. It's been imported. Seven um, grand. Eight, eight grand. grand. Wow. Eight grand. You got to buy it. Oh man, that's the, what the more the more your shoe I have wealth. with my current car. I just don't think my partner would appreciate a Japanese driving school vehicle. I think I'd raise a lot of questions. You would, driving yeah. around the Greater London area, yeah, in a Japanese. Why is that man tri- driving so poorly? <laughs> in a Japanese I think, driving. I think this trainee drivers took a few wrong turns <laughs> from Japan. <laughs> now he's here. Well, I just got back from. Uh, I just got back from Norway. Um, oh, on a little trip to Norway, and everyone there drives electric cars per capita. It's got more than anywhere else in the world, I think. Say, so maybe see. Hong Kong. Right. And people of Norway have won. The prize of life. <laughs> They've won the prize of life. Oh, it's so good, Norway. It's like, why? What is this? Like, <laughs> what is everyone's this? happy. The food's incredible. Everyone has the finest salmon. They drive electric cars. Everyone smiles. Yeah. The streets are clean. <laughs> Public transport's amazing. There's yeah, greenery. But, but, and then like autumn rolls around and it's a bit grim. <laughs> I, and you buy pizza that's 25 quid. I mean, it's quite expensive. It's that, quite expensive. That wasn't so it's good. Quite, yeah. That wasn't good. I, I went there to see uh, a band, Depeche Mode. Yeah, you, they're still rocking. There was now. some. There was, <laughs> there was some young people in uh, Stack HQ, Rory and uh, Temmy and uh, Tommy, mm. uh, all kind of under 25, 26. And uh, you said Youth. you you were you said I'm going to see this band, Depeche Mode, and you made it sound like they were the coolest new band ever. They have stood the test of time. Very they have well, stood the Depeche test of time. One of the few. Not a lot Basil of 80s and bands, boys. Yeah, Basil yeah. and boys going to drop some lyrics. Not a lot of 80s bands. I mean, I love 80s music more than anyone, but I'll admit mm. that a lot of 80s music doesn't stand the test of time. But you mm. know, your Depeche Mode, your Hall and Oates. They, you know, they, Where's the Hall and Oates come from? They, of they, all the bands you could have chosen. They stand the test of time very well. But it was a I mean, in up, a way, it? but it's a weird one. It's a uh, weird one to choose out of all of the bands was, from that time. Yeah. You went for Hall and Oates. <laughs> They're great. And, uh, but no, like Depeche Mode, the, the lead singer Dave Garhan came out. Wearing his leather and he's like still, even though he's <laughs> doing like his dance, sixty-one, doing his dance. he's like sixty-one, sixty-two, and he's yeah. like 
Still moving more around. moving better than I am. Yeah. So what's he done? How's he doing this? Uh, but it's so good. I, I'll it? tell you for what, it's heroin. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it, it's a big, long career of yeah. the old brown stuff. It was the nice. Did you ever yeah. meet Depeche Mode when you interviewed all the bands ever? I didn't know, no. Um, ah. Andy did them a few weeks ago. Um, yeah, they're in fine fell. They sadly lost a member, obviously, last year. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, they are... I went into a bar in Tallinn in Estonia um, uh, that was um, Depeche Mode themed. Right. And so all I, I mean, if you don't like Depeche Mode and you work there, that must be quite annoying. Like you mm. go to, to the bar Depeche Mode to have a like to work and you're just constantly <laughs> they're just constantly playing Depeche Mode at you. Yeah, that would be annoying. Yeah. But um but I and I, it was very warm in Tallinn in Estonia and uh, I was wearing a um woolen suit and a, woolen a woman. Suit. Um had a pop at me. So you you your woolen suit's too hot. <laughs> you don't belong there. Too hot. <laughs> I didn't, and I didn't belong there. But yeah, I mean, Norway really amazing. Loved it a lot. Um, a good Swedish friend of mine mm. hates Norway because they're just so much better than Sweden, apparently. Right? It, is that is that actionable? Is that true? Is that? I don't. I think I think people in Sweden and Norway like each other. Yeah. But he's just bitter. He told me about this deal where in the night in 1979 <laughs> there was a deal where Volvo were going to sell off 40 percent of Volvo to right. Norway, and yeah. in return Norway was going to give Volvo an oil field. Okay, that's a good deal. The, that's, a, that, that's a solid deal. A great yeah. deal. Great yeah. deal. Best deal ever. Yeah. Art the deal. And then Sweden went, ah, actually 40% of Volvo is worth quite a lot. <laughs> Keep your oil field, gas field <laughs> nonsense. And then Norway went, all right. And then they, they have a billion, a trillion dollar sovereign wealth fund now with all the oil and gas right, from okay. the oil fields Let's and see. the gas. Yeah. And uh, in hindsight, quite a cock up um, and he's never lived that down what a we, mess always talking he's always very bitter about that yeah um, by his regret <laughs> but he's to their own um, lovely place go to Norway if you get the chance we've got a story this week from Dave Dave from Manchester thanks Dave for getting in touch you're the best it's a story it's, it's, we haven't had a story from Sweden in a while <laughs> no <laughs> it's been at least three episodes off. what's going on because we have uh, video we don't, we don't like it <laughs> Uh, Dutch now. <laughs> Maybe we'll get a uh, more Norwegian audience yeah. now. I did right. run into one Norwegian viewer actually. Okay, yeah, he was nice. like he was he he nearly exploded because I was in H and M. Shah was like, I need some clothes. I was like, right. and then oh, she's not actually talking as well. I need to get some clothes, Chris. Like, <laughs> I'm oh, cold, Chris. No. Why why did you throw all my why did you throw all my clothes in in a <laughs> in a river? <laughs> Why in did Oslo. you do that? Why did you pick on me so much? <laughs> You're the worst. You're scum. So while she was like buying some clothes, I was I had my camera out and I was just wandering around looking out the window taking photos like a dickhead. Right. Yeah. Out of H and M, out of the window. That's how desperate <laughs> and how bored I was. Yeah. And this guy walks over and he's like Chris, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. He was like Lovely. What are you doing in Norway? I was like, Oh, I just come to see a band from the 80s that you probably won't know because you look like you're 20. Oh, you, the, you, you like, didn't learn your lesson then, yeah, coming in he, Billy Big Bollocks, you, <laughs> you band I've been hearing so much about. It's cool. That's the best thing about travelling the world and yeah. going to, to random cities when viewers run into you and mm. they, they, don't, they just don't know what's going on. Yeah. In it, Japan, it must, be quite, like, it must be quite confused. Yeah, in Japan, you'd be like, like oh, oh, yeah, no, I expect to run into you. In Oslo... What the no. fuck are you doing here? I want to do I want to go on a world tour of just random obscure cities yeah. and just surprise people. I reckon you can sign some books in Oslo because we, we uh, the Football Ramble podcast we do, uh, we did a show there, a live show there. I drunkenly... Um, um, oh, I does every story on this podcast yeah, start with I drunkenly. Um, I drunkenly <laughs> ate a, um, almost an entire jar of roll mops on stage. Uh, and Ooh. then we danced the night away in one of the hostelries. There you go. <laughs> night out in Oslo. Yeah. Uh, back, to, back to Dave's story. That was quite the segue. Hello, Chris and Pete. I wanted to write in about a memorable day I had in New Yogi Park, mainly thanks to the extravagant dogs. Oh. But not just any dogs. We're talking dogs in prams. <laughs> dogs in full-on outfits. There was even a Pomer, Pomer, Pomerian rocking... Pomeranian? Pomeranian rocking a tiny leather jacket like he was straight out of a rock band. <laughs> but the real star of the show was this guy. He was strolling along, not just walking one or two dogs, oh no. The legend had a whole entourage of 12 dogs all prancing around like they were in a doggy parade. <laughs> the thing is, he wasn't just walking them. He was posing for photos with literally everyone he passed. Tourists, locals, pigeons. And I swear even a squirrel joined in for a snapshot. Every few <laughs> steps, he'd stop, strike a pose, and the dogs would follow suit. It was like... <laughs> I'm just picturing it. It was like a real-life doggy <laughs> photo shoot, and I couldn't help but chuckle. <laughs> Three hours later, I'd explored the park. I'd had a picnic and read some of a book. Uh, no, not the Abroad in Japan book, no. unfortunately. Oh dear, terrible. David. Best out of that. And I stumbled upon him again. He was still at it after three hours. At it. Twelve dogs still dressed 
charming the socks off anyone who dared cross their path. He was lapping it up, mm. uh, thinking he's some kind of celebrity. Maybe he is. <laughs> Have you seen him? Yeah. What do you guys make of people dressing up their dogs? Uh, yeah. Before, I'd always thought it was tacky, but the Japanese seem to know how to do it. Keep up the great work, uh, guys. Dave from Manchester. I'm a big fan of that. What, dogs wearing clothes? You've got a dog. Well, I've got a you dog. you dress him up? Don't massively dress him up. I think um, uh, the dog that died last year used to wear like a very um, ca- uh, a very arresting sort of, almost like the sort of clothes that um, uh, Sherlock Holmes would wear. <laughs> you know those big, is it not Sou'wester? What's the, what's the big coats they wear? We had one of them for him <laughs> and he looked very startlingly good in that. He wore a coat better than I ever. Maybe there's a photo of this we can put on the YouTube but, but, podcast. But he, uh, <laughs> but I very much until I saw my um, younger dog uh, and very much more alive dog uh, Lola uh, wearing a a little kind of it was sort of like a, a flamenco guitarist sort of clothes, right. a Breton stripe, a guitar. Um, it looked amazing. And so before then, I didn't really have any policies. I didn't feel particularly strongly about uh, about a dog dressed up. But uh, yeah, seeing my dog in, in playing the guitar, just, you know, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. I don't know what I think about animals in clothes. I mean, I did the no. Cat Nation documentary, and in that yes. we went to a guy who made like $50 million off of a clever photo shoot where he got a cat, <laughs> put a fucking hat on it, and went, a uh, brand. Hat. And the, the brand. cat, it's like an 80s cat brand. I can't remember the name of it. Cat uh, brand. And it made bank. And I yeah. went and interviewed him. He was in his, you know, 70s at this point, <laughs> in his massive office in Shinjuku. <laughs> All these photos of cats wearing ninja outfits. Right, okay. And I was just like, why do... Had no one ever done this before? Why have I thought of this? <laughs> Get a cat and put a hat in it. Like, fucking cat in the hat. Mm. Dr. Zeus nonsense. Had no one else sort of thought of this? Oh, my God. <laughs> and I was just sitting there going, why am I in this cat Why am I in this cat again? documentary? What's Should... it, what, how did this happen? But I know th- there is a dog park in Yogi Park. I know that. Right. But I find that this... And also in the cat documentary, there's the guy who had a pram full of cats. Yes, uh, okay, right. And he just pushed... He pushes this pram, a stroller for American, North American viewers, mm. pushes this stroller through Harajuku mm. full of just like Persians. Right. Who are suffocating in the heat. Are they not going to be like running out off and uh, they're no, probably too tired? I think they're either tied they're to the they're either tied to the manacled stroll, to manacled the to the stroll or oh, drugged dear. or something. Right. Because they look really out of it. It was really, I, you know, at first everyone's like, oh, kawaii, that's cute. But mm. I thought, isn't this a little bit sinister? Yeah. And uh, in, the, in the case of this guy, he was a celebrity. He was known as the cat, cat man. Right. Cat man, right? Right. And he would just take these cats in his stroller he would say it was good for the cats. He, he, it's good for the, the cats. The cats needed their Guys, morning air. Guys, it's good for the cats. Yeah. yeah. He claimed it was good for the cats. I don't buy that. Why are they, super glue? Why are they glued to the... To well, the... I felt like he was exploring the cats for a little bit of fame. Yeah. Like cat Z, guy. Yeah. Z-list fame, right? Yeah. Because he's been on TV. He's been in Cat Nation. God forbid. <laughs> he's been all over the place. Yeah. Uh, are you just... calling him out? Is this the... <laughs> expose of the yeah, cat the man. expose of the cat man. There is a man who walks around Harajuku <laughs> with... A hundred cats in a stroller. I mean, if you are a wrongan and you like little girls in frilly clothes, like, you, and you've got a big stroller full of cats, that is like a bit worrying. You, yeah, I, I think this man needs to be checked out. It's a Netflix documentary in the making. Yeah. He seemed pretty funny seemed at pretty first. There was, <laughs> but there was something off about him. <laughs> yeah. The cat the started turning up dead. Like it's just it's, his house is made of all scratching posts. It's I, weird. But I remember filming and just thinking, it, it, it annoyed me how everyone was so excited about this stroller, right? Because it worked. It was yeah. a magnet, a oh, magnet uh, so, of so, young so, women. Worryingly, <laughs> he was like a 50, 50 year old man. Hey, like you either brr, 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 ain't. Pushing, and that it is the big <laughs> pram full of cats pushing the pram, and everyone. Tourists, yeah. you know, people are like would just turn up and they'd be like, "Come on, yeah, touch yeah, the yeah. cats," and the cats are like, "Kill me!" Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's so it was, hot. It was fucked. Give it, me some of your waffle cone. Um, but at least they weren't dressed up. Unlike fair, these dogs. Oh, right, fair. Okay, as long as he didn't put any, as long as he didn't put a um, Smithy's dress on. Animal um, abuse tier list. Yeah. I, when when my nan uh, was uh, in the war, uh, she um, she was um, a nurse and she would um, look after the babies in mm. the orphanage and stuff. Um, and she would take the babies out in a like imagine the biggest pram you've ever seen in your life, um, like the size of this house, I'm massive, doing it. absolutely. Well, imagine. Ma- it's about that big, right? And they would fit like ten babies in one pram. Uh, and it wasn't like, you know, nowadays, you've got to support the head, you've got to like, <laughs> do this, got to keep them alive. But back then, it was just like, 
It's just a big box on wheels, right? And she would walk around Hyde Park, um, and Winston Churchill was doing a speech, right? And my nan... We shall fight them on the beach. Just, <laughs> yeah. What the fuck he is that? Doing, he was doing a big speech <laughs> in Hyde Park. And you know, like Speaker's Corner, people would... Politicians would come and, and talk about... It may, he may have been on the campaign trail, I don't know, but he was like basically there, and um, all of his crowd was distracted by the fact that <laughs> my nan, Margaret Jones, had uh, a load of um, babies in a big pram. I so poor old Winston Churchill. He's trying to give his yeah. speech. We should find them on the beaches. We should find them on the sea. We should never. Why the fuck are the ten children in that pram there? What's going on? Probably why I drank so much. Probably. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> what is it with people and animals and children in prams? It's weird. Yeah. Loads of. Yeah. Don't never... sell a single man a pram. He doesn't <laughs> need it. He doesn't need it. You should. It should be like a gun license. <laughs> have you? Have you? Have you got a baby? And you go. Come on. We're gonna. We're gonna know. Oh my god! Well, there you go. I keep a, keep an eye out. Yorgi Park. Keep an eye out. Well, Yorgi Park and Harajuku the are cat's eye out. the same place, right? Yeah. So in one afternoon, you can see Catman in Harajuku. Yeah. You know, with his a marder of cats and people going, mm. cat. and then you can walk across the road past the former shop that used to be Condom Mania, a shop that <laughs> sold all the condoms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shame that so went. Still there? It's gone. gone. It's gone. Moved to Shibuya, <sighs> right. I think, and then. You can walk into Yogi Park, get you know, get your ice cream or whatever, yeah. and then you can look at the dogs being paraded around what in if, fucking wetsuits or whatever they wear. don't um, kind of work it out properly, and the cats and the dogs meet, and it's like West Side Story. <laughs> yeah, the cats and the dogs. What that, happens? That is going to be an incredible video for YouTube. <laughs> incredible coming soon. video for coming soon. Cats versus incredible. dogs. Yep. Anyway, cats and dogs in a park aside. Yeah. Right. Uh, what's the story of the week? What's going on in Japan, Mr. Dawson? Fill us in on the news of the week. I just think that expectant mothers need to get theirs, to be quite frank, Chris. Oh, God. I just I just think they've had it too good for too long, those pregnant women who are carrying little babies inside their bellies for nine months. They've had it too good for too long. <laughs> I think... <laughs> <laughs> they've had it too good for too long. I think we need some context here. What the bloody hell are you talking about? For the past five years, Chris, expectant mothers in a Japanese city have been receiving advice from local authorities. Fine. That's, that's what a local cool. authority is for. You that's know, good. sometimes... You know, not everybody has the answers. It's good to get advice um, via a flyer telling them how to behave after giving birth, uh, not for their own uh, or their baby's well-being, but to avoid annoying their husbands. Oh no! <laughs> I mean, the I'm scene not is surprised. So typically patriarchal. Um, the colourful flyer with cartoon drawings highlighted the behaviours that men didn't like in their wives, such as being busy taking care of the baby and not doing chores. Selfish. <laughs> Bastard. Terrible. <laughs> and getting frustrated for no reason. It also recommended that new mothers prepare their husbands' lunch every day, thank men for doing basic household chores, and always have a smile on their faces. Oh, my God. These flies have been distributed to expectant mothers for several years in Onomichi. You know, not a small... It's not a backwater, no, I mean, is it? Hiroshima, nice. isn't it? Yeah, it's a yeah. nice city. Um, it was only this week that it made the rounds on social media and sparked a bit of um, public anger, let's say, when people sort of <laughs> realised what it was. Uh, the mayor of Onomichi uh, posted on the uh, government website and Twitter that the contents of the flyers were not in line with the sentiments of pregnant women, childbearing mothers, and others uh, uh, involved in child rearing and caused unpleasant feelings for many people. That sounds like a man who's been shouted at by a lot of people. Um, and uh, the, yeah, I mean, they're going to stop doing these um, silly flyers. But, uh, I mean, this was distributed for a very, very long time. Um, and, you know, people, at one Twitter user said, don't just stop distributing it. Maybe think about the reasons why this chauvinistic, misogynistic literature has, has found its way into mm. the sort of thing you would give in presumably a hospital setting. I mean, uh, to 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 an expectant mother. Hearing this, you think, what is the genesis of this terrible, terrible idea? Apparently, it was from a survey. They yeah. did a survey in Onomichi of a hundred fathers in 2017. Oh no, I think it was 1975. Not what? <laughs> no, it was 2017. <laughs> it's the sort of thing someone would well, say yeah, yeah. in 1975, not 2017. But what was the survey like? Oh, it's difficult being a man, being a man when your wife's pregnant, isn't it? What? Yeah. You know, what do you not like about your pregnant wife? Yeah. You know, and they went, was well, this... I don't like it, which doesn't smile. It sounds like this survey <laughs> was, d- was done in a snack bar. <laughs> 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 old salary what? men having a right old fucking whinge. Oh, emptying the bank accounts of their family. She gave birth to my son <laughs> and now she won't smile enough or make she the won't. sandwiches. She, makes, she doesn't give me enough respect when I do a small amount of hoovering. That's pretty bad. 
I'm pretty bad, pretty poor, isn't it? That's bad. It's every week, though, isn't it? It's every week something like this oh. ends up in the news. I, I like it. I love Japan. Great content for this podcast. But gender equality needs to be addressed. Do you remember the incredible story two, three years ago where it turned out um, girls at university were scoring better on the medical exam? Mm. So the university or the school was automatically deducting yeah. like uh, 100 points or something yeah. from every girl. What's... Just as a base point, it was like, ah, they're doing too well. Because they're a girl, maybe they're better. Just remove a thousand, like a hundred yeah. marks, and and it would cause the most incredible backlash at the time. It's not great, is it? I mean, it's, it's not. So imagine, it's... yeah, I mean, this is this is bad. Yeah. Onomichi, how could you? This is Onomichi is the starting point of the Shimanami Kaido cycle, a place <laughs> right, I've painted yeah. in, in. It's also in the yeah. Yakuza video game. Yeah. You can watch, you, you can walk the streets of Onomichi in the game looking at the leaflets for. Why to be a happy pregnant woman? Yeah, <laughs> can you imagine that? If it's in the video Kira, game, you would have none of this. <laughs> imagine that in the video game, you're like going around the back streets, beating people up, and there's just a pamphlet on the floor. <laughs> like, oh, if you're a pregnant oh. woman, please and be happy. Oh, <laughs> dear, oh dear, uh, that's awful. Uh, awful business. You know, I uh, this is. I suppose it's because in, often in um, sort of shops and the cust- in customer service in Japan, the staff are always taught to you know, minute details and how to think, behave right. and react. Yeah. And, I don't know. Maybe they felt we could copy and paste that philosophy over to this. I don't know, really. I, I d- think I it's don't the know. drawings that you should... <laughs> it's not nice. And there's drawings of it. I mean, it's little sort of like little... Uh, like have you got a copy of the, the leaflet or the pamphlet? I no, I mean, there's a little it? link. There's a little link being circled. Uh, so, uh, um, I'm tricked around. But it is just like this kind of like kind of cutesy kind of like um, emoji-laden uh, leaflet telling these people how to... Uh, Can you imagine doing like... this in the UK? You'd get killed. Oh, yeah. And, like, and, and, and with, with good your cause. Your wife's just gone through childbirth, yeah. had the baby for nine months in her yeah. stomach, it, you know, giving birth, baby's crying day and night. And you're like, could you just like smile more and make the sandwiches? <laughs> Can you just imagine? You would Lovely. die in most countries. But anyway, yeah. there you go. On a Michi. But at least they've seen the error of their ways. Yeah. God forbid. Hmm. And they wonder why people aren't having kids in Japan. <laughs> 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 dear, oh dear. Well, back in just a moment, guys. For your stories, comments, and questions in a fax machine. Wow. Now we're back with the fax machine. What have we got this week from our listeners, Mr. Dalton? We've got a message from John from Espana here. Um, just got back to the UK from a hiking holiday in Switzerland. God, John. You uh, power. shame us all. Um, the <laughs> tap water in Switzerland is euphoric, and it had me wondering <laughs> what's the tap water like in Japan? The water in here tastes. Uh, the water um, at home here tastes grim because it's such hard water. Uh, how does it compare to Japan? Oh, mm. the, the tap water in Switzerland is euphoric. In Japan, it's euphoric. In Japan, it's orgasmic. My my mum was always obsessed with how soft the water was around the world, around the UK. Yeah. She, and whenever she went anywhere, she's like, it's just so. Oh, it's the suds. The soap sun, <laughs> sun. I forget, like in the UK, like the the north and south, there's a difference in the water, right? Yeah, there's yeah. hard, soft. It's got more lime in it. Yeah, I think they, um, they certainly used to put a lot of fluoride in the water where I was yeah. from. That's why my teeth have no fillings apart from one. I the water in Japan tastes good. I it, it tastes. Like I only water. ever drink it when I'm really hungover. I'm like, oh god. Oh dear. Um, I would say that um, Tokyo is notably um, known to be more chlorinated. It like tastes a bit chlorine, and mm. you can you, there is a bit of taste to it. Um, when comparing to Osaka or the other Probably. big city sort of thing but um, honestly, that's what I've noticed anyway honestly I've never noticed I only drink the finest Evian <laughs> uh, the Bellevue water from, from mm. bottles no I, yeah I've never noticed it does taste a little bit chlorine yeah but that's what gives it it's nice, fruity nice fruity clean. undertones yeah. Just nice and clean tasty oh. tasty oh. <laughs> but the most important thing is the tap water's drinkable yeah. please drink the tap yeah. water let's not waste it's a potable let's potable. not waste bottles like uh Harrogate people, Spring people water. and Pete's office. Do. I get confused. I get confused with. Where's that from? Oh, I bought it. Exactly. So sure. that's not me. This um, is Harrogate water. This is the Queen's royal appointment. Well, the well the Harrogate Queen's Spring dead. water. The thing that gets me is because I'm a big fizzy water guy because I'm a bloody ledge. Um, you and, disgust me. And uh, and the the, the I'm get, I always get confused because the black label is non fizzy and fizzy is white. I believe in the Harrogate Spring water um, mm. pantheon and I. Don't like that for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. I just, I just always pick the wrong one. I want fizzy. Well, you can, I tag, want to feel them on, something, you can tag them on Twitter. All right, well, <laughs> Pete against Harrogate Water. We got oh. a story from, or a question from Ben Cole, who says, Hello, Crusty Chris. Crusty Chris. Oh. How dare you, Ben? 
I'm a best-selling author now. I can't take... <laughs> so, I'm, pro- <laughs> I'm proliferating, Pete. I'm returning to Japan for the second time and am adamant on going to places that are not as frequently visited as Kyoto, etc., on my way to Hiroshima. I'm flying into Osaka. What are places between the two cities or near that you'd recommend? Himeji, Okoyama, Fukuyama? Let us know. Arigato, Ben Cole. Well, Ben, do you know what is right between Hiroshima and Kyoto? Oh, I don't know. Onomichi. Onomichi. So you go there and you can find the pamphlets on why you should be happy yes. as a woman who's just given birth. Uh, Himeji's nice. Got a lovely castle. Beautiful. I mean, that's all it's got, though, isn't it? It's just it's, one big, long road and a big castle at the it end. It is, yeah. And they've restored it beautifully, though. Well, it's it's a striking white castle. Mm. As white as the Harrogate sparkling water. <laughs> that's the peak cliffs of Dover. Um, but the one place I'd really go... If it was me, I'd go to Kurashiki. Kurashiki right. is the... The Venice of Japan. Okay. One of four places that claims to be the, Ven- the Venice. Of Everywhere Japan, that's right. got a canal, it's like, oh, it's the Venice of Japan. <laughs> but this is the Ve- this is the most Venice mm. in Japan. Kurashiki. The most Venetian. Yeah. Go and what I did a video on it called "I Tried Being Vegan for a Day." I it's tried a shame, to really. Go vegan for a day. It didn't work out it well. Did, and I had a, a banana. Stumble. Oh, what? I just had a banana. That's all right, isn't it? That was it. <laughs> uh, a banana like yeah. a melon and I'm like oh, vegan isn't it um, <laughs> but uh, yeah unfortunately because that video is called I tried being vegan for a day nobody actually can find this video if you type in like Karashki right a broad it doesn't come up so <laughs> it's a little easter egg there but that's a beautiful yeah. place lovely uh, I really like that place and um, yeah Himeji go look at the castle go look at Karashki yeah the, um, I, I, was, um, I was reading up on uh, Fukuyama actually big into medicinal wines Aren't we all? What the? F- what is medicinal wine? Wines make you feel better, mate. It's just wines for do- old, oldy timey wines well, that they put would in the make wine. you feel better. I don't know. I think it's just more like wine. You know, like um, those wi- you know, wine. like Buckfast. I think it's just Buckfast, but they just call it medicinal wine. It's not like they've not crushed up an ibuprofen <laughs> into a, into a bottle of Blue Nun. <laughs> it's it's an actual thing that's supposed to make you feel better. But uh, pour yeah. some Red Bull into the wine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I'm not gonna. You know. Uh, Japan gets most things right when it comes to food and drink, but they don't do wine well. No. Yeah, that's good. That's the one thing my partner <sighs> asked. Good. They went, do they drink wine? Mm. I was like, well, I kind of wine. <laughs> it's, you know, you're not going to like. <laughs> in uh, Where I used to live in Yamagata, they had like, they had, like white wine. And it was, mm. it was... It wasn't good. And they'd give it as a gift. And you'd be like, oh, I know. Just <laughs> sadness to, in just your eyes. Just know where to put this. Stop <laughs> the sink. Yeah. Um, no, Japanese wine, it's, it's missing something. Mm. It's not... that You know... The, right. Craft beer's great. Cider's not bad. Yeah. But wine, nah. Oh, sorry. Hey, I won't give it. Anyway. Well, well, the other thing that uh, I did my research on Fukuyama, um, cream puffs that look like takoyaki. <laughs> They're like got like, they've got like <laughs> what looks like takoyaki yeah. sauce on the top. And oh. and um, uh, uh, what's that called? That hard fish stuff, bonito flakes. Yeah. Um, they sort of pretend, to, but it's all, <laughs> it's all kind of like sweet. Wow. Amazing. That's re- like, I, I, re- yeah. I could not want to go to Fukuyama Mall for the medicinal wine. Can you imagine just <laughs> meeting the locals sweets. and meeting the locals there? Just be like, I travelled from England. I just want just a just takoyaki. I just want some takoyaki. Yeah, there's a reason that that food isn't overly well known no, outside, of, yeah, outside of Fukuyama. Point. Not a lot's known about Fukuyama, to be honest. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm James. I'm trying, hi, to, James. trying to get prepared for my first trip to Japan. I was wondering, is there any apps that will be worth downloading? That are frequently used in Japan. Keep up the great work, James. Oh. You're looking at the man who travels to Japan more than I have. Pete, tell us about... I only use Google Maps. Yeah. I think the only app you really need for Japan is Google Maps and Google Maps. Yeah, I don't think oh. Waze is particularly well uh, done in Japan, I think. Unless it is. No, I don't think it what is. What is Waze. Um, do you not use Waze as like a sat nav? It's very popular. It's like kind of like a. It's owned by Google, weirdly, mm. um, but they don't really talk about it all that much. It's like a. It's like a crowdsourced data um, rip. Um, it's very good for sat naving around uh, the UK because it's just a more um, more responsive version of Google Maps. I think when it comes to um, Fair enough. road closures and, and and congestion and stuff like that. If you ever you know find yourself in a weird place in Tokyo and need a taxi, there's an app called Go. Go Go. taxi, right? Yeah, that's pretty good for getting around. Yeah, um, but I'd stick to public transport unless you were in a bit of a pinch. Yeah, apart, like apart from like line, which are like a lot of 
companies will have little line links and stuff. Do you know what I mean? Like if they don't do mm. Facebook, they'll usually have a little QR code that link the face with a line. So, yeah, line is the WhatsApp of Japan, mm. basically. Yeah, um, and, uh, and everyone uses it in Japan. If you want to like, if you yeah, it's good to have line actually mm. because. If you meet someone in Japan and you want to be friends with them, that's the first yeah. thing they'll ask for. Line. Not Facebook, but no. line. So that might be good. It's the Chris app because Chris is the only person I talk to on online. Yes. It's Pretty literally much, just yeah. you. It's literally just you. That's the only person. Get my abusive messages from get Pete Donaldson exclusively yeah. through line. Yeah. But yeah, Google Maps, line, go taxi. You can get an e sweaker card, I think, still, because they, yeah. stopped, they stopped selling them, obviously. Yeah, you get the sweaker card for travel, public transport mm. around Japan, yeah. guys. Um, we mentioned that about a month, a few weeks ago now, mm. that they stopped selling Suica cards because they've run out of chips. Yeah, I think you can still get the ones with the names on. So you can get your name written on no, it. I mean, God no, knows no, why you, you can't. Do it. You can't get that. Right. It's gone. No. But you can get Welcome Suica card. Welcome Suica card. When you arrive card. at the airport as a tourist, you get the Welcome Suica card. It lasts just two weeks and then it'll explode. Like, oh, is, it only two week? is it only a two weeker? Yeah, that just blows so up. A two weeker Suica. <laughs> <laughs> and then it'll self destruct. Oh, dum, dum, never dum, mind. Dum, dum. Never mind. God forbid if your holiday goes over two weeks. Mm. Then, then you, then I don't know what you'll do, actually. <laughs> you'll find out soon enough because you're coming to Japan, Mr. Dells. I am. More on that on next week's episode. Keep the stories, questions, comments coming into a Japan podcast at gmail.com. We'll be back late in the week, guys. Do all over again. But for now, no matter where you might be, out there in the big wide world, have yourself a great few days and we'll see you right back here to do it all over again on the Abroad Japan podcast. Bye for now. Bye for now.